All right, this has been requested by at least two or three uh, viewers of my videos. How do you do better in mathematical classes in school? Uh, math, physics, calculus, geometry. How do you do better in these types of courses, these types of uh, classes, uh, depending on if you're high school, college, they call them different things. And so I think this is hugely important because chances are you're going to run into these at some point if you haven't already and they could play critical roles in your success or failure in school now i gotta be honest if there's one type of coursework that i was strong at and i just had to choose one math was one of those that I, I would be confident to at least put in the the basket um so the thing is, the reason I haven't talked about, filmed a video on this specifically is because there's so many other YouTubers who have so many more amazing videos on the topic. I thought, you know, go to them. They already kind of have it done. I don't know if I have much more to contribute. But it seems like they don't know about these people or they still want to hear my opinion on it. So that's why I'm making this video. But if you want more, I suggest you check out uh, College Info Geek also known as Thomas Frank on YouTube. He has like a million subscribers. He has videos on that. Um, if you just search up like how to get better at math courses in school, you're going to find hundreds of videos. There's going to be something valuable there as well. And then you have Ali Abdul, another million plus subscriber YouTuber who has these very high polished production level videos and a counterpart blog, which goes into massive detail. I've checked it out. Um, on exactly that topic, on studying and doing well on math and other uh, classwork. So you have all these great resources there if you want supplementary material. If you still want to hear my thoughts on the topic, which I guess some people do for whatever reason, maybe they like my personality or they want my thoughts or my secret Asian techniques, I don't know what it is. Let's just get to it. Um, I think if I had to add anything to the table, I would say um, in terms of math, it is maybe one of the most systematic things out there in terms of uh, getting better. When you talk about something like history or uh, English, there's a certain like spatial qualitative level of learning to it that um, is almost a bit of a talent. And, you know, you, you can't systematically just bump it up like um, with math. I got to be honest, I think one... It's not the whole reason, but a partial reason why a lot of Asian parents uh, have children who do so well in math is because ultimately it's systematic enough that they can, by sheer brute force of practice, repetition, and hard work, make their kids get really good at math. Um, now, granted, there's still at a certain level, like... There's a talent involved in certain spatial and uh, rational understanding of certain concepts that, you know, can't just be brute forced with systems. I mean, I've met some near prodigies in math uh, in some of my gifted and talented and advanced placement courses. And quite frankly, like I couldn't shine a light on them and some of the things they understood, I, I just never could. So, so there is that aspect to a degree, but especially if you're talking basic level math we're talking middle school elementary school even in high school um, unless you get to the senior year and you're taking calculus a b or c maybe then it starts to get a little rough but i mean i i think out of anything i've hacked the game so so how how can you start to do this i think you know there was a time where i just kind of zoned out there's there's a period kind of like one year, uh, freshman year of high school, where I just kind of zoned out a lot of life issues. So I was, there was that the before, that's the before story. And um, I wasn't doing anything, wasn't completing the homework assignments. I just felt so bad. The teacher would look at me each time when collecting homework, give me the most disappointed face ever when I wouldn't show my homework. And it, it was just a rough, rough time for me in my life. However, fast forward a couple years, I completely transformed it, was getting A's in some of the toughest, uh, highest levels of math. How is that possible? Well, you know, it's, it's a matter of different things. One, a great teacher. 
some of that's luck, you know, you can't really control that, but some of it's not. If, you, if your existing teacher sucks, you can find a supplementary teacher on YouTube. I bet there's some f teacher teaching the same course on Udemy, on iTunes U, on Skillshare, on YouTube. You can find that supplementary teacher who explains the topic in a much better way that you just, you just get it a lot better. So that's the first hack. Uh, find that supplementary teacher if you don't luck out in the in the main teacher. Second thing, homework assignments. Um, you know, I, I I got so fed up of that disappointment day after day for months from my teacher, and unfortunately, I never was able to kind of fix it at that point because I just felt like I'd fallen so far behind. But towards the end of the year, I started to you know f switch things up. And then the next year, I was like, I got to turn over a new leaf. I started to realize that homework assignments were basically free points. I mean, you had six, seven, eight hours as soon as you got home to do something that will probably take you 10 minutes, 15 minutes max, um, especially if you're taking one of those kind of introductory or like base level courses. Um, and so what, if it took you 30 minutes, 45 minutes sometimes, which was rare, but it did happen. So what? Do it. Do it. And guess what? You still have five, six, seven hours to do what you want. And so I was like, I got to switch this, this up. And I, you find your own groove. For me, I, I realized if I do it immediately as I get off the bus, like first thing when I get home, like it just kicks everything in the new gear. I start to feel so good. It's already done in 15 minutes and it feels great. When I started handing out, handing in those homework assignments every, every day, my mood changed, my positivity changed. I started to build momentum and I knew those points added up. Uh, now in college, it starts to get a little tougher because they don't even do homework assignments. But at that point, high school, it's a good training wheels ground, free points. I mean, and so in terms of the assignments, I mean, usually it's pretty explanatory. Usually they'll, they'll tell you, you know, do these problems. Answers are in the back, but, but you know, do these problems. And you might think, oh, I'm just going to copy the answers and then do them. And then, um, you know, I get the free points. The issue is you don't understand how to do the problem itself. That's the whole goal of class. They're trying to teach you something. You have to learn it. So the next level, and this is really the pivotal level, it's about actually learning how to do the problems. So I knew, it was at that point I knew that that was critical because learning the problem itself is what really made you score well on the test and that was the biggest driver of grades. It really came down to tests and homework. Sometimes it'd be like in-class assignments, but usually it's those two things. So I started to think, how can I really understand the problem? I would actually try and do the problem, check my answer in the back if it was wrong, fix it, figure out why it was wrong. And um, usually the books, especially now with the internet, um, I didn't even have much access to the internet back then, but that even helps more. If you don't understand it, Google it, YouTube it, figure out why this problem led to that result. Um, you know, you could ask your mom and dad to, maybe they'll help, probably they won't these days because um, they don't know it. If they do, that's even great, even better. But you'll find an answer somewhere and it's all about repetition then. Um, I really started to see studying not as a hindrance or annoyance, but an easy, quick investment way of getting ahead of others. Now. You know, we're still at like the more beginner stages. There's like an advanced stage where, you know, you're spending a lot more time studying and you don't have, you don't even have to get there now. Don't even worry about that. Don't feel intimidated by that. That's a different realm. Right now, we're just talking about getting started and really those, those quick mindset shifts that make a huge difference. So if you can spend like 10, 15 minutes, everyone has that time. 10, 15 minutes. I, I mean, you're going you're gonna to spend what? Like seven hours playing Fortnite tonight? 10, 15 minutes every night. Just kind of reviewing that. You know, anything you don't understand that the, the teacher went over uh, on your own time. 
and really making sure that you understand it. Um, and then slowly building that muscle. So some days, you know, once you get to that level where 10, 15 minutes isn't an issue, some days you might want to push your comfort zone and do 20 minutes. But your goal here is, you know, when you don't understand something sometimes, especially like every two or three weeks, there's going to be a problem that's just like maybe a little too confusing. Like maybe it's polynomials or some type of new, new, uh, new process and you don't understand it. It may take you more than 10, 15 minutes. Maybe it's 20 or 25. Um, you, you want to start stretching your comfort zone there and then figure it out, learn it. For me, it was a lot of trial and error by just kind of reading the textbook because the textbook would explain it like step by step and it give you examples and examples and problems with answers in the back. So I would just keep reviewing it until I figured it out. I'd see the problem, try to figure it out on my own, check the notes, check the answers, read the explanation. Um, and if that doesn't work, you know, there's YouTube videos, there's the internet, you, you, you figure it out. Generally, Within a quarter, the math teacher generally teaches a handful, several, a dozen different concepts. And he tests you on them. And, you know, if you understand these concepts, you'll do well on the test because you know how to do the problems. And usually they just switch up the numbers, but the, the concept, the process is the same. So that's your real goal of understanding that. And the homework is, um, it's a way of getting free points, but... It's also trying to get you to learn these things. And I think the biggest mistake here is people underestimate um, what, what really matters, and that's understanding these things. Some people are smart enough to figure it out in the class itself. For me, oftentimes, I was a little bit slower then, but what really made the difference wasn't the school time. It was spending that little extra time afterwards, putting in that work. And that makes a big difference. A lot of people will skip that. And then, you know, the people who do well, believe me, whether they admit it or not, they're spending the time after school and they're learning. And that's how they're picking up on these things so quickly. You, you see these people in class and they're like, they're, they're not grasping it as much as you either. Um, and then the next day they, they, got, they understand it completely. And you might think, oh, they're just smart or what else. Don't let them fool you. They spent some time after after class on their own, reviewing it, running it, running those drills, and that work pays off. Um, so you know it really isn't that bad. A lot of sometimes you get a really good teacher, and he'll he'll dumb it down. He'll explain it fifty different ways. Um, leverage that. You know, ask spend a, ask a couple questions after class. Those tiny little things do add up. And uh, I think the biggest thing uh, was, was uh, for me, I would write it all down. Because sometimes the teacher, the math teacher, he would, on a whiteboard, like draw out the explanation and like examples of it. And it was a little too fast for me to comprehend the process in the moment. A lot of students tried to do that in the moment so they could skip reviewing it at home. But I would just copy it all down so that I could process it when I got home or I had a moment. Maybe it was at lunch when I had some free time, whatever. And that made a huge difference. So that extra 5-10 minutes of processing it, um, it makes a huge difference. Some people are just so against spending even a minute after school. And, you know, it, it's, it, it's just preposterous. Um, and in terms of active recall, which I've talked about in other videos, it's it's talked about on YouTube constantly if you want to just search active recall. But uh, that's a huge part of it as well. When you review a concept, don't just review it, you know, understand it and then for, forget about it and never think about it again once you understand it the first time. Um, if you spend even just two minutes every other day repeating and just refreshing your mind on it, um, after you do that for two weeks, you'll cement that into your brain, in your memory, your memorization, you know, much, much more than you would if you tried to cram and do something like an overnight study session before a test. So in total, you end up spending less time studying um, and 
you get more payoff. So think about that. The overnight stand, study cram session is the opposite of what you should be looking for if you want to be a star student. Um, so hopefully that helps. Uh, I do not claim to be a expert at everything. Just giving my tips. Some, some will work, some will not. But uh, good luck.